So the first ever thing that I, I would um, advise is uh, to do this introspection. So to raise awareness on, um, on ourselves, to really know what is happening inside, how we, we are functioning, what is dysfunctioning, what we would like to change, uh, what direction uh, we want to take, how we want to feel. So it's really like to, to do a quick uh, analysis, quick or not quick, but to really be able to connect with yourself and be aware, okay, of what is happening. Welcome back to another episode of Your Visionary Podcast. 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 Welcome to Your Visionary Podcast. This podcast is specifically for you and your vision. Get ready to grow. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to Your Visionary Podcast. I'm your host, Christian Brown. And today I have another exciting episode for you. We will be hearing from Dina Kassab, who is a integrative clinical psychologist based in Paris, France. And so it'll be a very exciting and a very inf informal um, interview. So I'm excited for it. But before we get into that, I wanna remind you that Your Visionary Podcast is all about um, putting out informational content from um, interesting individuals with the goal of helping you get closer to the vision that you've created for your life. And if you don't have a vision for your life, this is a podcast to help you create a vision to be um, to become the person that you would like to be right now and in the future. So without further ado, I want to bring on our guest, Dina Kassab. How are you, Dina? Hi, Christian. I'm great. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this. Um, and so let's let's get right into the content. Um, so let the audience know, you know, how you got to be where you are now. Sure. So like you said it, I am an integrative clinical psychologist. Uh, so I am born and raised uh, in, in Paris uh, and I did all my studies there. I did also uh, another master of business psychology uh, uh, and coaching in Dubai from the University Hayat Wat. And I founded also an organization for young people two years ago that uh, aims to raise awareness um, for young people on mental health. And we also did some free psychological support for some time, but now we, we stopped it. So yeah, the, the whole point is to really help the, the young people to know more about mental health and to have some accessible content. Um, and now I am currently working um, in a mental health uh, at work company in Paris since April. Um, and I am expanding also my uh, independent activity as a psychologist. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's so amazing. And, and so what what got you started in this mental health and psychology industry? Okay, so since a young age, um, I always believe that um, being good in our mind is really the foundation of a healthy life, mm -hmm. even though we, we have everything uh, uh, accessible and we have a lot of luck and we can travel and have some amazing material. Uh, if we don't feel good in our mind, we will not be able to appreciate it. Um, and I also naturally um, always love to connect with people, know more about um, human beings, how they function, and also how to help them uh, function better. Um, so I uh, quickly um, found out that, okay, this is the only thing I can do. I want to be a psychologist. Um, but uh, if I listened to people at the time, it would have never been possible because everything around me was telling me to not do it uh, because it's not a job that pays well, or at least in France. Uh, it's, uh, at the time, there was not much opportunities. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of people told me that oh, it would be really hard for you to listen uh, all day to problems. So anyways, just to say that uh, a lot of people demotivated me. Yeah. Um, so of course, sometimes I hesitated, but I always felt that no, anyway, yeah. the, we, we, we don't have to follow the, the same path and everything can change easily. And we can see today that mental health 
um, is something that a lot of people are aware of its importance. We talk about it more. It's more uh, accessible than before. And uh, the cliches start to reduce. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm really happy that I didn't listen to, to people at that time. And um, also the other thing I want to, to mention um, is that I'm always focused on the direction I want to take. For me, I'm just maybe at 10% of uh, my journey. Um, I'm, of course, really happy of where I am now, but um, it's just start so um the the fact of always being uh focused on where i want to go it it makes me accept more the challenges that are on the way because mm. i know it's not my final situation yeah yeah definitely that's cool and i'm glad you mentioned that because i was going to ask you you know how do you stay motivated when people are you know kind of demotivating you right and saying that you're not going down the right path but it sounds like you know you just gotta um, be confident in your vision for yourself and know that you're working towards a future that you want you know as a as an individual so that sounds really cool um and i bet it's funny now and it's cool now that um <laughs> that mental health is so mainstream and you know it's like a it's people are talking about it a lot more. So now there are more and more opportunities coming about. And so it's kind of like you, you know, you saw all of this <laughs> coming almost. All right. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like the noise of the world and of people and the environment um, was not loud enough because I could mm. really feel that, uh, no, this is important and this yeah. is, what makes me happy, even though it's not easy at all. And um, especially now that I'm still young, even uh, if it's been a, a small moment that I started, but um, it's not easy to gain confidence and to pursue in that uh, in that field. That's why yeah. there, there is a lot of psychologists that retire uh, early because yeah. it's really overwhelming. Um, so yeah, the self care is really important. So, but that's another subject. Um, yeah. But uh, yes, and indeed, I started to to even be sometimes excited about the um, the rejection or the bumpy road because yeah. it forces me to um, to be more creative, to think more out of the mm -hmm. box. So, okay, this is not possible now. How can I do that? So. I feel it's it's never an end. Uh, a closed door is never an ending. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so you you said that you studied business psychology um, in Dubai, I believe you said. What so what what did you learn throughout that program? So after my master of integrative psychology uh, in Paris, I always wanted to do another master in English uh, because. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that I wanted to, to work uh, in the national field. Um, so I wanted first to go to London to study positive psychology and something also uh, around coaching. Um, so I did again some research and I found this master that um, brings knowledge about business psychology and also some, some things about coaching. So I said, okay, why not? And um, I saw that there was a campus in Dubai. And so it's a really different region than Europe. So I said, okay, why not try this experience? So I didn't uh, think a lot. Um, I'm really not impulsive, but really spontaneous. So sometimes when I want to do something, I will be excited and okay, try. If it works, it's fine. If not, yeah. it means it's not the right door or I will learn something of it. Mm -hmm. So I just applied. I got accepted. And two months after, I, I moved to Dubai. And yes, it was a really good uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Man, what what were some, some of the things, um, I guess, that you didn't really know about psychology that you learned from your second master's um, that kind of helped you, know, yeah. helped you out with what you're doing now? 
I learned um, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And at this time, I just started a nonprofit organization. Um, so I, I worked with um, not a lot, but um, a, a group of people that followed me in this project. So um, I really um, gained a lot of knowledge on how running a project or a business. Mm -hmm. And I really understood that running a business or a project is not only about technical competence or having an idea, but a lot of um, human qualities and skills are needed uh, because even though you, you have a great mind, you're intelligent and you have some amazing ideas, um, if you are not able to gather people, to motivate people and to make them feel good, they will not stay long next to you and you can do anything alone. So um, knowing about business psychology on how to have a powerful leadership um, and indeed the, the, the course I love the most was Authentic Leadership. It's from Bill George, yeah. initiated initiated that in 2003 um, and the whole point of it uh, there is five uh, qualities or skills that he described and um, it says that first of all you, you have to have a purpose a passion if you're passionate and if you really love what you're doing and you know why you're doing what you're doing you will be able to uh, motivate people and share them your excitement for your work uh, the second aspect is um rela relationship sorry uh yeah, no, sorry. It's distinct values. Uh, if you stay close to your values, uh, if you don't break them for anything, uh, people will respect you and will trust you. And this often manifests in the policy of the company. Um, so the third point is relationship. If you care about people, if you're interesting, uh, interested in them, if you ask them questions, if you make them feel that they are close to you, same thing, they, they will feel more connected and they will trust you and they will want to, to, to stick um, with you. Uh, then it is the sense of um, goals and, and discipline. Um, yeah, if you know how to stay calm and uh, and disciplined in, in times of stress, uh, same thing, you will be able to, to manage better uh, projects. Um, and last thing, just to be quick, uh, it's to have a genuine heart, um, to uh, really be uh, authentic. So that's really the, the main idea, yeah. to, to show compassion, to, 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 to care. Uh, once again, um, and that will really be shared with the employees. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah really. That's, yeah, that, that's super cool. I um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna dive deeper into that because um, I, I think that's important. You know, when it comes to being being an entrepreneur and also being a leader, um, knowing just how to do that authentically. Um, mm. You know, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna uh, dive deeper in, and do more research on that. So thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, so did did this course and program help you kind of create the foundation for your own business? Yeah, so it, it helped me a lot because even though it was not a business, so it it, it was nonprofit, um, it helped me to communicate better with people yeah. to have some more tools to, to manage conflict, even though it was not perfect, of course. Uh, but it, it gave me a, a lot more insight on, okay, how to motivate people, how to consider them better, how to give them um, a louder voice. So, yeah, and also um, I, I understood how coaching can be a really powerful tool in a company because, mm. of course, we, 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 we don't have all the time the required tools, the, the ideas to solve our problems. So to, to, to call for an external help, an external expert help, it can be really beneficial and, mm. and also uh, economic economy of time and yeah. money and, and lost and a lot of things. So, 
yeah I, I really love the the coaching techniques that, that that I learn and that's um why now in my practice I'm trying to 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 use some of them because my uh, approach of psychology is integrative so I try to adapt what is the the most adapted according to the profile of the the person mm-hmm. yeah so part of that integrative practice is like being flexible um to be able to work with like different types of people and then i guess speaking their language if you will you know uh in terms of like helping them deal with their issues yes exactly all the the concept is to be flexible to be able to uh uh adapt what will suit them uh the best so some mm-hmm. people for example need more structure uh uh, way uh, to to do therapy. Some uh, like to to talk a lot, so they they need more uh, uh, flexibility and mm. um, and uh, intro, introspection. So yeah, th- there is different kinds of uh, of needs. Yeah, very cool. So let's now let's let's talk about the actual like mental health journey. Um, because the, the purpose of this series of this season of the podcast is to kind of help people um, get an introduction and a look into mental health and what a mental health journey looks like. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who is interested in, in starting their own mental health journey? So the first ever thing that I, I would um, advise is uh, to to do this introspection. So to raise awareness on, um, on ourselves, to really know what is happening inside, how we, we are functioning, what is dysfunctioning, what we would like to change, uh, what direction uh, we want to take, how we want to feel. Sorry to interrupt this podcast. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about our presenting sponsor, Blemish. Blemish is a tech startup founded in Atlanta and being built in Paris. The one goal of Blemish is to build imperfect people for a better tomorrow. To learn more about how Blemish accomplishes this goal, visit Blemish.com. That's B L I M I S H dot com. If you enjoy hearing from psychologists and learning about the science of the mind, visit blemish.com. If you're ready to start your own mental health journey or you want to get more information about how to do it, visit blemish.com. If you value personal growth and obtaining information to help you reach your highest self, support our presenting sponsor and visit blemish.com. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. So it's really like to to do a quick uh, analysis, quick or not quick, but to really be able to connect with yourself and be aware, okay, of what is happening, and then to take a- action and to adjust mm-hmm. and to change plans. But first of all, uh, to do this work, so it can be done whether um, uh, by, of course, seeing a therapist. Um, so discovering um, our personal history or our functioning or even just um, diary methods. And this can be um, quite beneficial because uh, nothing is engaged. You are just with yourself. You're just whether writing your thoughts or talking your thoughts. Um, and you just be- become aware of everything that you're, you're saying in your mind and everything that is not said. Because when it's in, in the mind, that's, um, that's when it's dangerous because it can get messy, it can get confused, it can get yeah. uh, um, mixed up in really wrong ways. But when it's in front of us, when it's clear, when we know what is happening, okay, it can't play us in an unconscious way. Um, so, yeah, to really start a mental health journey, I will really advise to, to start by that. <laughs> And mm-hmm. if those both uh, options um, are not uh, suitable, even just talking with someone you trust, someone you know that won't judge you and is uh, mm-hmm. open-minded and mature enough to, to hear uh, everything that you can say. 
So a safe place where you can just um, be confronted to yourself like a mirror because it's clear that a therapist is like a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And I love that you use the word introspection. Like that's that's one of my favorite words. Um, <laughs> Cause I, that's something that I, that I do personally, you know, whenever I, um, whenever I am looking to like take a, a new step or go in a new direction, I always, um, you know, just look, look inside to, to ask myself, like, what do I want? Um, you know, how do I want it? Uh, what is the result that I'm, that I'm seeking? Uh, how do I feel? You know, all those different things. And, and that's just super important. So I love that you, that you mentioned introspection because I'm sure I've said that word a bunch of times on, on this podcast. So it's very, mm-hmm. very cool. Um, mm-hmm. And if I can add also, sorry, so, yeah. uh, something, it, it's not uh, something that can be done just at the beginning. Like you said, it, it has to be done all the time at any step because it's really easy to, to, to get uh, confused at any time because when there is stress, when there's a lot of emotions, it, got, it, it gets um, uh, messy again. So to really have this habit of, okay, asking questions to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, um, I'm, I'm curious because I, I had this idea of, you know, like helping people find peace in mental health. But as I started to like have these conversations, um, I learned that the word peace, there's not just like one meaning to it. So I'm curious to know, like what, what does peace, um, peace in mental health like mean to you? Um, so to me, peace is not what is supposed to make you feel good, but what is really making you feel good or peaceful, if that's, um, the word we we are talking about, um, because we can hear, um, a lot that to, to feel peaceful, we have to do meditation, to do yoga, to have a healthy lifestyle or anyways, there's a lot of, um, yeah. uh, suggestions and advices to, to, to have a good mental health. And me, what I defend the most, even if it seems logical, but it can, uh, uh, be confusing sometimes when we start to be interesting in, in mental health is that there is nothing that is supposed to, to 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 make us feel good it has to be felt it has to to be experienced if for example uh, what is making me feel good is just to to do a walk in nature and be disconnected and really have this calm in my mind okay so for me that's peace so mm. to answer your question there is as much definition of peace than there is uh, human beings <laughs> so my peace will be different than your peace yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I agree. And that's kind of why I, I asked. I want to just hear your perspective um, just out of curiosity. Um, and that's super cool. You know, like the the idea of it being something that you feel um, and something that like makes you feel good because what makes like me feel good is not what makes you feel good, right? But I think just for people even th- asking, that, asking themselves that question and doing that type of introspection, like, you know, what, what makes me feel good. I think that's a positive thing that people could take away as something that they can do, you know, even right now, you know? Mm, yes. So, so that's very cool. Um, and, and now I want to talk about um, intuition because that's, I know that's one of the things that, you know, you're, you feel passionate about, right? Just like the whole, this whole idea of following your intuition and, um, and, and stuff like that. So, so what does that mean to you? Um, so again, in the same idea that we just discussed now, uh, intuition, I, I always have some difficulty to say this word, um, is uh, something that uh, we feel and not that it must be really felt deeply in the body. Uh, and... Um, something that is like sending us some signals but so again Mm -hmm. not from here not from this part but 
really um, something instinctive. It's like, for example, when we are hungry, um, we will feel uh, that we want to eat, that we need to eat. And that's a kind of intuition. So uh, it's something really, um, really deep and uh, even that could be compared to a need. For example, if I talk again about my story, I know that I needed to study psychology because it's yeah. um, something that uh, brings me satisfaction. It satisfies uh, a need. And so that's how I, I, I would compare, uh, for example, intuition than uh, any rational thought, for example, yeah. something really instinctive. And yeah, and, and to do that, it's um, important to la to lower the the noise of the word because it can be really confusing. And when we don't know well ourselves, when um, we don't have confidence in what we think, what we can feel, uh, this not noise of the word can distract ourselves from this intuition. So um, this work of introspection and of knowing better ourselves really help to connect more with it because yeah. when we know ourselves or values what we like what we don't like it will be more uh, easy to to recognize that yeah yeah that's so cool and it makes me think of this quote i forgot who said it but the quote is that the the desires of our heart give us a hint as to what we were put on this earth to do um yeah. and and that kind of speaks to like intuition too, and kind of just this whole topic of what we're talking about, you know, how, um, how, you know, what makes you feel good is, is important to, to recognize. Um, but I, I'm curious, do you feel like intuition and like gut feeling, uh, you feel like that, that's like the same thing? What'd you say? Um, um, I would, you're asking if it's on the same level, if, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm asking if it's on the same level mm -hmm. because this is giving me mm -hmm. some context, right? Cause I was talking to a friend of mine maybe yesterday and we were talking about like a certain topic and I was asking him, I mean, like, what, what is your gut telling you? What is your gut feeling about this? And he was like, I don't know. I need to, I need to think about that. And then in my mind, I'm like, you know, a gut feeling is, it should be something that's already there something that's present versus something that you have to really internalize and think about but maybe yeah. that's not true what do you think yes so i would say that it's kind of the same thing because yeah. the intuition also is something you feel and we say that the gut is the second brain we mm. we feel really things with our with our belly when we are stressed it will be tense when we're happy it will be with a lot of different sensations so um when the gut is telling something it's never for nothing for example when mm -hmm. you uh, first meet someone you often have kind of uh, signals there whether it will tell you yeah i like that vibe or i don't like so it's often yeah. at this part of the body that there's a lot of signals. Mm. So it's just my opinion, but I, I feel that uh, <laughs> it's kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, so as we, as we get to the, to the end of this podcast, um, I know I asked you before, like what advice would you give to someone who started their mental health journey? But I want to ask, I want to, I want you to, to kind of give them, give someone like a, maybe a two or a three step process. If they're in a the mindset, like, Hey, I, this mental health thing is real. I know it's something that I may struggle with. Um, but I'm not, I don't really have like tools or resources to be able to figure out like what I need to do. So what is a, a like a two or a three step process to help me get started in the right direction? Mm. So I would say that if someone, for example, um, has really little knowledge about mental health, to first do a lot of research 
or at least um, what interests uh, the person. So, um, okay, maybe I feel it. I have some anxiety, but I don't really know what it is. It's some kind of stress. Okay, uh, I will research it. Maybe mm. talk about it, to understand better the the concept, the, um, mm. the notion of stress. So to have uh, to start some theoretical um, background um, to maybe be able to recognize if um, uh, we have some of the symptoms, but maybe not on Google because it. it there is everything on it, but for example, mental health um, uh, magazine, like for example, it's Paradise. There's a lot, a lot of uh, content uh, on mental health and different symptoms, different issues, lifestyles. So, so to just um, research, even if it's books, uh, to buy a book that might interest you and know more about the subject. Yeah. Um, um, and then when this is done and you understand better, okay, what is mental health uh, to to do this work of introspection, to, to go deeper in, in the subject, okay? Uh, this seems like me, but this not, so where can it come from? But uh, without overthinking it, even if I know it's really easy to say it, but not to do it, uh, so to always think about it in a productive way or beneficial way. How can um, my thoughts help me? Uh, yeah. um, in French, um, we say, I will try to, um, to translate it, but there is thoughts that um, handicap and there is thoughts that uh, help, basically if I can mm -hmm. translate it like that. So to always turn your thoughts in, okay, um, how can, can it help me? Because if I, I'm just repeating to myself, oh, uh, my, my, my word is nothing, I can't do anything. So to just uh, lower your self-esteem, this won't change anything to, to say that. But if you're asking, like you said, questions, uh, if um, you understand things better, if you are retaining a lesson, so this can help you. So, um, yeah, to, to do this work of introspection. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the, the last point is to act. Okay, now that I know that, for example, um, uh, my day is, uh, is too uh, overwhelmed. How can I filter mm. it? I don't have yeah. to go every day to, to this event. I don't have to see those people. I will get away from this person because it's toxic. So to re readjust your life, um, to get to a point where it's stable and um, you're functioning uh, in a healthy way for yourself and you um, integrate enough resources that enable you to regain this uh, energy that you can lose, mm. for example, at work or some unpleasant activities. Yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. It was very, very valuable. And so, so let, let the audience know um, how they can get in touch with you is via social media, email, you know, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yes. Yeah, so um, my email is uh, Dina. So will you write it? Yeah, maybe? I got you. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so <laughs> whether by email or on the Instagram of the Paradise or uh, to, to book a session also by, by email because I have a platform um, for French people. I don't think it's possible to... Um, to um, register from abroad. I'm not sure, so okay. something by email. Very cool, very cool. Well, Dina, thank you again for taking the time to, to speak with me. Uh, this was very, very uh, valuable. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, it was a pleasure. <laughs> awesome thank you well thank you all for watching another episode of your visionary podcast see you all next time peace and love 
And now this part of the episode is called the Visionary Minute, where I go over three key takeaways from the previous episode. In this episode with Dina, the first key takeaway was that being good in your mind is the foundation to a healthy life. And I think that's so, so key because when we're faced with situations and we're faced with decisions on how to to live our best life, I think a question that we should ask ourselves is, is this healthy? Right. Not is this good, is this bad, but is this healthy? And the truth of it is the foundation of a healthy life is being good in your mind. Right. Because your mind is the root of it all. And so I'm so glad that she mentioned that. And the second takeaway is that running a business requires good human skills. And it's so key because soft skills are sometimes overlooked when it comes to being an entrepreneur and being a leader. But soft skills and human skills are really the most important thing when it comes to leading people. And the third takeaway was that introspection is a great start to your mental health journey. And I'm so glad that she used the word introspection because I love the word of introspection because I believe that being introspective and just that introspection process is so so powerful because we are experts on ourselves and so it's important for us to really analyze what's going on in our minds and in our bodies to really get a good gauge on our state and so um, those are the three takeaways for this episode thank you again for tuning in and watching and i look forward to seeing you on the next one peace and love